In the Gazelle School of Business webinar on building a powerful and simple website, we talked a lot about phase one of your website being to build a simple one-page website with book now action buttons. Right. Well, phase two was to add the different menus uh, inside your website and expand the website to maybe five to eight pages, utilizing the menus and, and some hidden pages. But we really didn't talk about phase three that much, which is search engine optimization. So we're going to give you a quick tutorial here on how to use Squarespace to do really easy search engine optimization. Let's dive in. Now, it's important to note when you first log into Squarespace, you typically come up here to the pages where you edit the images and content of your website. We're going to slide down to marketing and click here. And then under the discovery tab, you'll see SEO for search engine optimization. And we're going to click on that. Now, when you do phase one and phase two of your website using Squarespace, that's actually cumulatively only about a couple of hours worth of work, right? You can do all of it in less than a day easily once you learn how to use Squarespace, right? And so uh, phase one, phase two, very easy to do. Search engine optimization isn't complex. It's just a lot of really small detail work, right? Where you have to do a hundred small things that each take 30 seconds to a minute and a half to do, right? And so all of a sudden it starts taking more and more time. Uh, and depending on how comfortable you are with some of these things, uh, search engine optimization could take you know five to ten times more time than it took to actually build your website. So let's show you how to bite off these things one step at a time. And Squarespace has this really helpful SEO checklist. So let's click on that. And when you first look at this, you're probably going to feel overwhelmed, but you don't need to be because it's simple stuff, right? Like add a site title, add a site description. Each of these things take 30 seconds to do add your location, right? And one quick story, uh, when I was running a piano service company one time, I actually accidentally hid our location pages from Google. And immediately we went from being on page one to page infinity. And it took me a little bit to realize what had happened. As soon as I re-enabled the location pages, I went back to being on page one. So a lot of this stuff, it, it wasn't complex. Uh, it was easy to have a location page. It was easy to enable the location page to be viewed. Uh, but if you don't do some steps in SEO work, then you go from having it work to having it not work. And so it's just important to go through this list one item at a time, making sure you followed all the recommended steps right? Uh, connect to custom domain, connect to social media. If you have social media accounts, actually linking them in your footer uh, can be very helpful, right? Add an icon, add a social sharing images, all of these little things work. And then also you get down to bigger things like verify your site with Google Search Console. That's a huge part of coming up on Google. Verify your site with Bing, right? These, and then allow Google to index your site. These are critical parts that you need to do. Uh, so when you log into your Google console for search engine stuff, uh, you can actually link that back to your Squarespace site. So these are probably some bigger items, whereas all this stuff up here cumulatively might only be like three hours worth of work. Um, so. All right, let's go back to our Squarespace site and talk a little bit more about the things that you can do here. So here's your checklist. Uh, Google search keywords. Keyword search is something you're going to do and study. This is unique to you and your business and your area. Uh, so go to your Google search console and study the keywords being searched for in your area and make sure that you're optimizing your pages for those keywords. Um, and then hiring an SEO expert may or may not be necessary depending on your comfort level and your budget. Um, and so Squarespace simply makes that easy to help you know connect you with some of these other people that do this kind of work for you and are familiar with the Squarespace platform. Um, so another thing you can do that's really easy though is just look at your homepage, your pages and your items and how they display, right? So an item might be if you have a piano cleaning service you provide uh, and you have an element in Squarespace for a piano cleaning service, right? When somebody searches piano cleaning, well, Squarespace and Google work together to show them that item, not your homepage. And so you just want to make sure that these display in a good way. Uh, and down here under the homepage is a place to add a description. That was one of those things on that checklist. Now, this whole area is global for your entire website. So let's show you how to 
uh, search engine optimize individual pages in Squarespace. We're actually going to come back to the pages tab. And now here's your menus, your public navigation pages, and here's your not linked pages. Uh, when you hover over a page, you'll see this gear icon over here to the right. We're going to click on that. And the general settings, there's stuff like page title, navigation. And now that you're familiar with SEO work, you're going to immediately realize each of these things have a small impact in the searchability of this page or your website. So make sure all of this stuff is here. Make sure the pages are enabled and make sure you don't have a password on the page, right? Uh, SEO, when you come here, uh, this is where all of your not linked pages uh, the SEO is controlled by your global website SEO that we just showed you um, under the marketing tab. Uh, social images, uh, for your social images, make sure that your logos have socially, uh, basically smaller images uploaded so that it doesn't lop chop the image on a small screen, uh, which is what's happening here with the logo we uploaded. So you might want to scale down your logo and add a social uh, small screen optimized logo for use on the smaller screens, right? And again, each of these things have a small impact on the searchability. Uh, now, when you go to your public pages, you can come over here to the settings icon and you will immediately notice that you have a few more options under this SEO tab, whereas all your not linked pages down here used your website's SEO settings your public pages, you have a few more options to add custom titles and descriptions. And this is where you can add in some keywords and things like that. Uh, and if you have a public page in your menu that you don't want to be seen by search engines, right, you can hide this page here. Um, and so that's just some additional options to optimize a single public page for some additional SEO uh, inside Squarespace. All right, well, the last thing that we're going to cover is your terms of service and privacy policy. Now, in one of the other videos, I mentioned that these two things can have an impact in SEO. And, you know, obviously you're not collecting a lot of information about clients on this page. And you don't want to actually put this stuff up here in the menus, right? You don't want a menu item for terms of service privacy policy, which is actually what a lot of young business owners might try to do because they just don't know where to put it, right? Instead, put all this stuff down here in the footer. Um, so I'm going to show you quick. We're going to edit our footer now. And for the last year or so of your business, your footer has simply had uh, your e address, your phone number, and your email address. Well, we're going to go here and edit the footer, and I'm simply going to add a new line here called Terms of Service and Privacy Policy. And I'm going to tuck this uh, down here in the footer because my clients don't really care about it, right? Google search engine optimization cares about it, but not my clients. Uh, but I'm going to appease Google and pop it in the footer. So now it's a link that their crawlers can crawl and see, oh, check, the demo piano service company has a terms of service. They're good. So you're going to add the text, highlight it, and then come over here to the link icon and a little bit of detail work. You want to make sure you follow these steps. So come over here and hit the gear icon. Now, typically you would add a URL. It's really easy in Squarespace to simply search for the page. So we're just going to search for our terms of service page and I'm going to open it in a new window and I'm going to hit save. And now the final step, don't forget to hit this little apply button down here. Okay, great. Now the terms of service is linked to my terms of service page and my privacy policy, same thing. I'm going to go to the link. I'm going to go to the gear icon. I'm going to go to the page. I'm going to search for privacy. There we go. I'm going to open it in a new window um, and I'm going to hit apply. And there you go. And so now your terms of service and privacy policy, it's in the footer. The crawlers and web uh, search engines are going to be able to see that you have those things and it's not going to interfere with your client's uh, ability to use this as a, a marketing website that gives them a great client experience and clearly tells them what to do without confusing them, right? These are little things that you can do. Uh, one quick tip, if you are going to hire an SEO expert, 
Keep in mind that the website we taught you to build followed the story brand process, which is all about simplicity and making it easy for the clients and clear for the clients and using the story brand process uh, to help them decide if they want to do business with you. Well, SEO work sometimes can conflict with what's best for your story brand marketing. So if you ever have an SEO expert recommend, oh, you need to change this right here to say a hundred different words, right? or what is this? Why are you only saying this? Add a bunch of text here, you know, uh, talking about X, Y, or Z. You need to be able to know that as a business owner, that's a bad move. It's a good thing for SEO work. It's a bad thing for marketing using the story brand process. And here, right, it's a little bit of a catch-22, and you need to hold these things equally and value, but you need to tell your SEO guy, listen, this follows the story brand process, and it is going to, even though I can drive more people to my website, it will have the effect of driving more people away from my website, right? So talk to me about how I can get those keywords without, um, you know, actually driving people to my website while still driving people to my website and giving them a great user experience, right? And so one thing they might do is add a bunch of text here on a white background and color the font white, right? So you, your search engine sees text and those are little tricks. They may or may not work and search engines will probably catch on to some of that stuff eventually, right? But there are little things like that that you can do that allow SEO to happen and still give your clients a great user experience. Um, and so uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, may or may not work and search engine optimization is a moving target, right? And this is where hiring an expert is really helpful because, you know, if we woke up in your shoes, we would simply tell the SEO expert, we use StoryBrand to market our website. Here's why. Build us SEO within the StoryBrand context. And maybe this is where you want to actually go find a StoryBrand trained search engine optimization expert. Uh, that would be a great person and a great asset to have in your back pocket as a business. And they're probably worth every penny that you would ever pay them as a business. And again, this is phase three of your website. This is why you're not going to end up doing this in the first year or two years. You're probably going to do this between year three and year five as, you know, just additional things that you're doing to help better market your business as you grow. Uh, so if you have any questions about this for our team, you can email us support at gazelleapp.io.